Enzyme Bath Bombs and getting ready to bring you a tutorial. So come on in and let's get soaping! <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Ann Kamenicki with White Dormouse Artisan Soaps. Welcome, come on in. We are soaping from our home on wheels, traveling and camping in Stock Island, Florida, just minutes from Key West. I'm getting ready to make some lemon and key lime bath bombs using some fresh ingredients and some infused oils that have been sitting for weeks now and ready to use. And I want to give you some light info on where we are and the rest of the Travel Island Tour can be seen at the end of the tutorial or at the bottom of the description box. Don't forget to press like if you like the video and subscribe. Stock Island is a great place to plant your feet for camping. Plenty of restaurants, right on the water, fresh bakeries, and a history of hard workers bringing in millions of pounds of fresh fish per year, with Key West pink shrimp being on the top of the list and oh so delicious. The docks are beautiful, lined with large sails, fishing fleets, and those who love the sea. Although Stock Island has its own charm, there's always something fun to do, minutes in each direction. The infamous rooster that you heard crowing is just the standard here on Stock Island and Key West, staking its claim while walking around town, and there are plenty of them, including their lady friends, the chicken. The Key West Rooster is one of the most photographed residents, no longer praised for being a food source and a prize fighter like they were years ago and highly protected now. The Key West Rooster has a lot of history from Cuba to the United States and has become the standard here from restaurants with the Rooster logo to hats and all sorts of things. Okay. Now that I have rambled on about all of that, the last bit of information is there's a Navy military base on Boca Chica Key and it's performing its annual air show today. So grab your calendar for important events in Key West for your next travel destination. Now let's get soaping. Let's start our recipe with all of our dry ingredients first. The basic recipe for bath bombs are baking soda, Epsom salt, cornstarch, citric acid, and your preferred carrier oils of choice. Beside the basic recipes for bath bombs, there are other additives that may be used. Dry colored pigment or root powders, sea salt, fragrance or essential oils, body safe glitter, floral or herbs, clay, polysorbate 80, and bath milk powders. Tools to make bath bombs are listed in the description box below. Now let's work on our oils. Formulating the perfect recipe for bath bombs has always been a challenge for many bath and body crafters. Preparing lightweight oils to the exact measurement of dry ingredients to the proper spritz amount of either water, witch hazel, or alcohol. Humidity and room temperature have even been the complaint in the performance of the final product. Plastic or stainless molds and the best place to dry bath bombs have been researched as not to cause flat and unsightly bottoms. The great thing about determination is we are desperate to keep trying different recipes and that is exactly where I started and continue to try new things each time. Today we are using infused avocado oil with arnica flowers. An infused oil consists of a carrier oil that has permeated, infused for aromatherapy use. We can talk about infusing oils next time. One ounce of our infused oil will be used today, along with other oils of choice, to add to our bath bomb mixture. When formulating your own bath bomb recipe, keep light oils and qualities in mind. I chose arnica infused oil for dry skin. It's great for skin injuries and cell damage. Other uses are to ease arthritis, 
bruising, increased circulation, swelling, muscle sprain, and acts as an antibiotic. Avocado oil is nourishing and fights the process of aging. It's moisturizing, great acne buster, and controls inflammation. And that is a lot of great stuff in your bath bomb. I suggest doing a small skin test before using any bath and body product you are unsure of and always read the ingredient label. We are also using a few drops of cucumber seed oil and mallow extract, rich in vitamins B and C, and extra special for soft, smooth skin and hair. Now that we have our oils, let's move on to our essential oil choices. Lime essential oil positively affects your mood and is one of the uplifting oils when added to other combinations. It promotes emotional balance and well-being. Today we are mixing and formulating our own fragrance based on the ounces of our oils. Liquids typically used to spritz bath bomb ingredients are isopropyl alcohol, witch hazel, or water. But today we are squeezing fresh lemons and limes and replacing those liquids with natural, beneficial fruit juices. Transfer liquids to your spray bottle if using isopropyl alcohol or witch hazel instead. Be careful not to inhale the mist during soap making. I did not choose to wear gloves during the entire process. A safety mask and eyewear will help protect from dangerous fumes of the powders used. It's a good idea to mix the bath bomb ingredients with a mixer on low speed first and transfer to a large bowl. It's time to add our oil slowly to the powder ingredients. Polysorbate 80 is then added. This is a common ingredient in bath bombs, allowing the oils and colors in the bath bomb to be absorbed by the water. Take a moment to stop the mixing and scrape the bottom of the bowl, loosening the powders so they are fully combined. Now we can add our essential oils. I chose a combination of lemon, lime, tea tree, lavender, and sweet fennel. These oils help provide mental stimulation, clarity, and focus. They relieve stress, provide antiseptic qualities, and boost the immunity system. Let's add some color. I divided the mixture evenly into three bowls. A white color was added to the white portion in the event any essential oil tones decided to act poorly and discolor my pretty white. Yellow and two tones of green were added to the others. Start whisking and reverting to hand mixing the colors, blending until combined. This is your choice to do whatever is comfortable. It's time to spritz the lemon lime solution very lightly at first. As soon as you spritz, mix very quickly so your batter does not bubble and activate. We want it to activate in the bathtub, not in the bowl. Take care as to not allow too much wet solution to saturate your batter. This is where it all gets tricky. Begin mixing with your hands during the molding process so you can feel the consistency of moisture to determine the right time to mold. This will also help break up the larger pieces that may not have broken down during the stand mixing process. Squeeze a small amount of mixture into your hands and when it feels as if it's holding together, not too wet and not too dry, we are ready to mold. If your mixture has not yet come to that lightly wet sand feeling, Spritz lightly one more time, but be careful not to get trigger happy. Do this with all three colors.
I want to make two tone bath bombs, one white and yellow and another green and yellow. This takes practice as you not only have to make sure your mixture is staying moist and dry enough to mold, but dealing with three bowls of temperamental bath bomb mixtures is a challenge. I'm filling one slightly and just giving a little loving press, not too much because if you press too firmly, you may have a problem tapping your bath bomb out of the cups. Fill the mixture overflowing and press the two cups together, smoothing out the excess from the shell. Many crafters like to keep the bomb in the shell for a bit and others get that anxious bug and tap them out right away. Either way works. Today I am using large stainless steel bath bomb molds. I start by filling one color a quarter of the way, pressing ever so lightly forming a nice seal on the outer part of the bath bomb. This helps to reduce tiny air pockets. I suggest for the next time that a separate bowl is used for any color that spills over. So you can maintain each color perfectly without mixing. As you can see, a small amount of my white color has mixed in with my green. This was not my intention. So next time we will have an extra bowl for anything that spills over. We are back the next day and have left our lemon and key lime bath bombs sit overnight. It seems like a big challenge to make bath bombs, but believe it or not, they are one of the first soaping projects I ever took on. I adore them and each time we make them, we get better and better and perfect the process. These are handmade, the slow way, one by one with love. Sometimes we flop, but that's not discouraging us today or any day, right? I'm extremely excited about our five little lemon and lime bath bombs. They came out really, really good. They start out very heavy once they're molded and set out to dry. And each day they get lighter and lighter and work much better in the tub. They're super cute. The two tones came out nice, although I would have liked to have put another white up here. You know, these are things that we need to note to self. And there we go. I think that came out super, don't you think? Thank you so much for coming along for our ride today and making bath bombs with me while traveling and visiting Stock Island, Florida. I hope to see you next time and happy soaping.